Good evening, Jamestown. You're listening to something very special happening tonight. It is Arts on Fire Live. This is the first of five performances we are going to be doing on a Saturday night. Very happy to be with you. Of course, this is WRFA station manager Jason Sample with you. And Arts on Fire Live is something we've done in the past. However, technically, it never was live. It was something that we decided to do uh, broadcasting from the Media Arts Studio at Regilene Center for the Arts, recorded and then broadcast afterward. But this is live, folks. There is no delay. Uh, it is simply uh, the the musicians and their music for the next 60 minutes. And we've got an exciting slate of uh, musicians for this series. Five performances in all beginning tonight. We'll get to tonight's performers in just a moment. But before we get to that, we want to let you know that Arts on Fire Live is presented by the United Arts Appeal Project Pool Grant for Chautauqua County, as well as the Corporation for Public Broadcasting's American Rescue Plan Stabilization Grant. As I noted, we do have five performances in all. Uh, in two weeks from tonight, Saturday, October 16th, we will have Cindy Haight, joined by Sarah Rafalowski. On Saturday, November 6th, we will have the band Feverhawk performing live for one hour at this time, 8 o'clock. On Saturday, November 13th, the following week, we will have Cold Lazarus performing live in the studio. And then to finalize the series on Saturday, December 11th, we will have The Probables performing live in the studio here, live on the air on WRFA. Again, very excited to be doing this Arts on Fire Live program. I should also note that in addition to being broadcast live on WRFA, WRFA 107.9 FM. We are also streaming worldwide at our website, WRFALP.com, and in our mobile app. In addition, we have a video stream going thanks to Cranky Plate Productions and Kip Reynolds and his staff uh, bringing you a live feed of this performance on both YouTube as well as Facebook. So if you're driving in your car and you want to check this out live and watch it for yourself, uh, check out those two uh, social media outlets to um, check out the performance that we have for this evening. I think that does it for the housekeeping. We also have our, our audio engineer and technical director for the Regilene Center for the Arts, Owen Murphy, helping us out tonight running the audio. Uh, so thank you to those who are making this possible. And without further ado, as I noted, this is kicking off Arts on Fire Live, and we have a very special um, group of performers, a duo, I should say. We have Ken Hardley and Mandy Andrews. Very happy to have them in the studio. We're gonna talk with them in a little bit, but as I noted, this is all about the music, so we're gonna let them play some music. I'm gonna get out of the way for a couple of songs. I'll check back in and we will uh, have a little Q&A and then some more performances. So with that being said, Ken, Mandy, thank you so much for being here tonight and take it away. Thank you, Just, Jason. And friends lost their lives. He came back home and had a couple of wives. Didn't come to him too much. He had a couple of bars. It was better than that job he had fixing cars. He had some friends like a guy named Jet who would haul some of your stuff for a cigarette. say goodbye people were grieving cause he was their kind of guy it took a while but not that long and his best girl she stayed pretty strong he was leaving and it was hard to say
some beers and sat in a lawn chair Had a cabin in the woods, raccoons got in there Kids all around, he knew most of their names They kind of looked alike, he watched them play their games Some dumb things and never got ahead But there seems to be one thing that I got quite right Got this little woman here to say goodnight He was leaving and it was hard to say goodbye and People were grieving and some of them started to cry Now, this is the part where Mandy and I usually get uh, a big round of applause. I'm sure you folks are doing that at home from your living room. So thank you very much. Really, really appreciate that. We can hear you. It's wonderful to be here at the multi-purpose studio, the multimedia studio here at uh, the WRFA, Reg Lene Center for the Arts up here. Very, very wonderful people. And uh, I think there are lots of things going on. Check it out. But at any rate, I digress. You know, over the last uh, little while in the pandemic, uh, it's, well, it's been a year and a half now, longer than that. It's been a long pandemic going on here. Going on two years. Going on two years. Two years of pandemic from, you know, when it started off, I thought, you know, like a lot of people do, well, this will give me a chance to, like, catch up on my garage cleaning and things like that. And also, I didn't get a haircut. I thought that was great. I must look pretty great, don't you think, Mandy? Obviously. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> but then I looked in the mirror one day and I said, you look like a sea anemone, Ken. So I, I, I went and got my hair cut. Now I look like my typical bozo self. What were we doing? Oh, we're going to do a, a song we released uh, about a year ago or so. Yeah, it was the first one. It was the first one we released together, that's right. I'll tell you a story about that. It's compelling. Don't move an inch. <laughs> Something I didn't know I have to back and get my stuff straight Things to get for the worst I gotta leave others things to do first And I would say goodbye But it's getting late Oh, there's a girl looking out the door can you tell me when you'll be back? Oh, my darling, I would like to stay forever. But you know I'll be back soon and maybe never. I don't want to leave alone. It's dark and I'm chilled to the bone. Oh, Lord, I'm in a terrible state.
see that you are lonesome And it's a dark night this life has become I'm walking down that silent trail our listeners here on WRFA, as well as Mandy Andrews on cello. We are doing a live broadcast tonight, Saturday night, on WRFA LP 107.9 FM in Jamestown. It's Arts on Fire live, and we do emphasize live, something uh, new we're trying out this year, the first in five live performances on a Saturday night. We'll give you the rundown again in the middle of the hour, but in the meantime, let's uh, again welcome our guests, uh, both Mandy and Ken. Thank you so much for doing this. This is the first one, and I couldn't think of a better person to help us out than Ken, and of course, uh, Mandy as well. Thank you both very much. It's a real honor, Jason. Thank you very much for uh, letting us kick this thing off. What an idea you had. Right. And some courage. Yeah, well, it's stolen. The best ideas are stolen, right? We're not the first. We're not the first station to do a live performance in studio. We're definitely not the last, but I'm, I'm happy to do it here on WRFA. And I, I think you know a, a good place to start out with is I noted a lot of people are familiar with Ken Hartley because of Rolling Hills Radio and the uh, the large volume of songs that we have in our library. When it comes to the local rush hour on WRFA, people hear you just about uh, every week, if not every day. Uh, Mandy Andrews, somebody who's somewhat new to uh, our listeners anyway when it comes to WRFA. So I guess a good place to start, Ken, is just uh, how did you two get together and start this collaboration, this duo that you've been working on now, and, and how long have you been doing it? It was a rally that brought us together, wasn't it, Mandy? Yeah, it was that Liberty for Lights. Liberty for Lights. Lights for Liberty, sorry. Okay, <laughs> we're going to get the microphone a little closer. Yeah, what, right. what rally was that? Some rally. Liberty for Lights. <laughs> it, was, it was for the, the kids that the immigrants that came over and they detained them. We're at the kids in yeah. cages. And I was playing a Woody Guthrie song, of all things, and I, I listened and there seems to be a, what is it, there's a cello to my right playing Woody Guthrie. <laughs> and it was awesome. I was just taken with what Mandy does right off the bat. You just jumped right in then, Mandy, while he was performing? I did. And he was freaking out because his music was flying all over the place. And I come <laughs> overly prepared for everything and had a bunch of clips, so I threw my clips at him and then forgot to get them back and he proceeded to chase me down the street afterwards. Right. You forgot your <laughs> clips. Right on. Yeah. So, so, so as I noted, listeners remember Ken uh, from his work on Rolling Hills Radio. If, if we had an audience here, I would urge them to give a round of applause because I knew from working behind the scenes with you on this, uh, just as, as someone who uh, did some emceeing as well as helping to get the programs on the air, this was uh, a true passion for you, Ken. And you did it for 10 years, started out as the, the Wood Songs. Uh, not that the, the started out as the uh, yeah the Wood Songs old time coffee house radio hour exactly yeah it did and after a couple of seasons with uh, Dennis Drew's sage advice we decided we'll just go on our own right and, on uh, that worked pretty well and and so what have you been doing uh, since then that uh, you chose a good time to sort of uh, retire from that program it was right before the pandemic anyway yes. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, we had three shows booked that we could not do. We were going to do show number 100 at, at the amphitheater in Chautauqua, uh, but we never quite got there. And uh, so uh, I took off doing pandemic things. Mandy and I started, uh, we started uh, going into the studio, and we've, we've got a whole lot of things in the can now. We started releasing singles uh, one by one, and that's on the advice of Don Dixon. He's our producer. 
And Don said, singles are the way to go nowadays. Nobody buys CDs, which was not news to me. I stopped selling CDs about five years ago. You know, that one CD I sold uh, every month, that, that people stopped buying that. But at any rate, uh, Don said, singles are the way to go. And we listened to him because he was R.E.M.'s producer and uh, people like that. So whatever Don says is fine with me. And it's worked out quite well. Our goal was to uh, release a song every six weeks. And um, we're on target. Oh, did I say weeks? I meant months. So, <laughs> But we do have one that's going to be released any day now called Water is Wide. It's a tr traditional song. But after that, there are a lot of uh, uh, originals that are going to be released. I enjoyed the first two songs that you played. What were those two songs? Uh, the first two just now? Yep. Yeah, Best Girl was what we opened with, and uh, that will be released someday. In fact, John McEwen of Nitty Gritty Dirt Band will be playing on that song when we released that. Oh, wow. And then Sooner or Never, as Mandy said, that's the first one we released as a duo. And that was... Uh, just well, before the pandemic. Just before, yeah, a little over two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Super. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to stop talking. We'll do some more catching up in a little bit, but this is obviously about the music. Arts on Fire Live here on WRFA on Saturday night, October 2nd. Very happy to have both Ken Hardley and Mandy Andrews in the studio. With that being said, how about a few more songs? Sounds good to me, Jason. And that was actually the first song that Mandy and I uh, uh, recorded together. In fact, uh, when, we first, when I first called Mandy after uh, failing to return her uh, windproof uh, uh, paper clips, I, I called her up and uh, said, I've got this song. I would love to have a cello on this song. Are you, uh, are you up for that? And, uh, and we got together our first time. I think it was in my living room or something. And it was just magical right off the bat. Mandy, uh, uh, Mandy is, uh, uh, you play in a Philharmonic, a good share of your life, right? And just uh, melted right into folk. It was, it was really magical. It was really something. And uh, I think we ended up, by the, by the time we had played together for a half hour, we had a, an undeniable chemistry.
At least, I like to say that. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready if you are. After your dad, he needs you now. You're the best he's had. I used to talk to him and sit him straight. His open question is beginning this fate. Now it looks like time for my trip to end. You'll go. Father, my little friend, I'm off to go back to the source. I'll be in your dreams as you on your course. Was that light? Oh, that light coming soon. Just one more night. There's that door. I'll be leaving soon. Stay just a little while with me. It's funny, I don't know about you, Mandy, but when a song finishes, I always feel like saying, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, after, uh, after 53 years of being on stage doing this stuff, oh, what was I doing? Um, some things just become part of who you are. So, once again, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, some people lately have been, I don't know, I don't know what this is about, but lately we've heard, oh, Ken and Mandy, you know, they sound good and stuff like that. And they've got that offbeat humor, which I take to mean we're really not very funny. <laughs> so I could be wrong about that. No, I am. Um, 
So, you know, sometimes you get into a relationship and you see there's something that you have to deal with. Now, in relationships, sometimes there are a lot of things to deal with. You know, the guy doesn't pick up his socks in the morning. Who, who knows what, you know, doesn't clean the dog hair off the couch. Other, other things, like don't take that personally. Is that a reference to me? <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, we have this internet show that we do. It's really not a show. We, we have a rehearsal, and every once in a while we take a break. And uh, during that break, we play a little, uh, what did you call it, a pop-up? Yeah. We have a pop-up video. We have a pop-up video. That sounds like... space. Yeah, yeah, it's like, we're, like VH1. <laughs> we're, um, so, we, you know, we take five, ten minutes to say hello to you folks, and, uh, and that's what it reminded me, because Mandy has a menagerie at her house. They're wonderful, wonderful animals. My personal favorites are the poisonous dart frogs, right? <laughs> yeah. Who just had babies. Congratulations. <clears throat> so as I was saying, oh yeah, <clears throat> so, you know, in a relationship there are things you really have to kind of pay attention to um, as you get to know the person. For example, I um, have to be very careful and pay close attention to what I say because there are certain words that are unacceptable. I, I can't say them. Like a real obvious one, for example, is moist. Ixnay on the oist may in my house. So um, here's a, this might be helpful to you folks, <clears throat> I hope. Mandy will start off with a little dramatic jazz. <laughs> <laughs> She's a sensitive kind She's honest and sweet And very refined I thought I was good Until I asked her to chat She said, just say talk Don't say chat Hey, I'm making scrumptious meals So nice and creamy With shrimps, so delish Delicate and steamy She said right there, seven words I'm a don't say list Remember that lover If you want to coexist You don't say that you don't say that Just talk no more Don't make me cringe It upsets my chin Makes me come on edge I said, hey, let's go for a walk I'll grab the knapsack She said, you don't say knapsack You say backpack well, I said, all right We'll just go outside We'll say walk around to and fro No, I just say to and fro now I don't want to go. Well, you just sit right there and I'll, I'll grab the clicker. She said, you don't say clicker unless you want to bicker. I said, well, just sit right there and I'll see if I can find the remote. She said, you don't say remote. I'll punch you in the throat. I began to realize there was so many bad words. I tried hard to memorize the ones she preferred, like dinner, not supper, like couch, not bab and port. Cold snap made her violent, thought we'd end up in court. You don't say that. Better not say that, buddy. You don't say that. Keep your lips sealed. I just don't know what would make me cringe at this. But, well, maybe you should just tell me the words I can't say. I'm not sure I'll get them right, but I'll certainly try anyway. Well, she said, okay, you listen up, Bucky. You listen up real good. Here are some words you can't say. Do I make myself understood? There's lactate and sniff and carpal tunnel. No swag or bro. The Canadian A or Ronald. Handy Andy gloves or pokey Lafarge's name. Keith or putter. Lapel section or proclaim. There's swell and slather and mucus and clutch. And while I'm thinking of it, there are some things you can't touch. Like my navel, my mole hip and parts of my head there are a couple of things that you can touch instead you don't touch that uh -uh. you don't touch that I'll call the cops I just be normal don't make me cringe don't say it's my chin makes me come on hit me I 
began to realize this was a matter of great concern. I didn't know what to do, and I thought to myself, hey, I'll talk like David Byrne. Oh, fa 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 Her eyes got wide as a lesion, sensuous, bologna, ketchup, woke, cancel culture, succulent, whatnot, Nah, two, three. You don't say that. Oh, I hate that. You don't say that. You better listen. I'll be outside looking in. Talk no more, don't make me cringe. Since my tree makes me come on. And ah, oh, you don't say that. Uh-oh, -uh, you don't say that. Oh, just talk no more, don't make me Upsets my gene, makes me come on. It, it upsets my gene, makes me come on. It, it upsets my gene, makes me come on. It. Nice. <laughs> Once again, Ken Hardley, Mandy Andrews, live on the air or streaming video if you're watching us on social media, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, or tuning in to 107.9 FM in Jamestown, New York. We thank you very much for checking this out. This is Arts on Fire Live, uh, a series, a special series of live performances we're doing here on WRFA for the remainder of the fall season. Of course, we have Ken Hardley and Mandy Ed Andrews this evening, and they will continue all the way up until 9 o'clock, uh, so they have time for a few more songs, so stick around for that as, as Ken gets serious and whips out the banjo. So uh, he'll be getting set up here in just a moment. In the meantime, a reminder that in two weeks from now, on October 16th, we're going to have Cindy Haight and Sarah Rafalowski joining us in the studio at 8 o'clock. On Saturday, November 6th, we're going to have Feverhawk in the studio. On Saturday, November 13th, we'll have Cold Lazarus in the studio. And on Saturday, December 11th, it'll be the Probables performing. Again, Arts on Fire Live made possible through funding from the United Arts Appeal of Chautauqua County, their project's pool grant. Thank you so much, United Arts Appeal, and also the Corporation for Public Broadcasting's American Rescue Plan Stabilization Grant. We got some extra funding from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. We have some programming that we've decided to put forward, and this is one of those uh, programs that we've decided to launch. So uh, thank you very much to the CPB for helping us out. Uh, we're going to do some more Q&A in a little bit. So we'll be catching up with Ken as well as Mandy, but in the meantime, again, it's all about live music this hour on WRFA so I'm going to get out of the way and let them perform. I think Ken's got the banjo. Ken, you got the banjo ready? Got it ready, Jason. Oh, it looks like you got it ready. Okay, here we go. Get the banjo ready, everybody. We've got Ken Hardley, Mandy Andrews live on the air and streaming live on social media, Facebook, and YouTube. Take it away. And the question is not if we're ready, but this is a banjo. Are you ready? Feel free to tune out for the moment. <laughs> the Jamestown, Jamestown, New York uh, has a wonderful baseball team. A couple of years ago, they named it the Tarp Skunks, which gained national attention on the Today Show and everything else. Here's their theme. Baseball, baseball, we stand and cheer our team. Nothing better than that. At Dietrich Park, the skunks take the field. The pitcher wipes and send it down the pipe. The batter's never seen a poke cat throw the ball before. It zips right past him like a strike. Baseball, baseball, we stand and cheer our team.
The tarp skunks are a lot of fun. They're young fellows, you know, um, in, in college and things like that. And during the summertime, they they uh, they play baseball with the tarp skunks, and they. This is the first time they've been in a situation where there's actually a theme song that has to do with them. And they seem to like it a lot, is what I'm told anyway. I've never actually been on their bus, but I can only imagine the smell. Um, this, is <laughs> this is a song uh, uh, called Goodbye on Ice. And uh, it's, it's a song that was actually, uh, uh, really the germ of the song came from my seven-year-old granddaughter. Uh, we were on vacation somewhere, the, the extended family was, and at the end of a very long and uh, uh, exhausting day, I opened a beer and my granddaughter came up to me and she said, Papa, I wrote a song. I said, I'll tell you what, I just opened this beer and as long as there's beer here in this can, I'll listen to it or whatever you want to do. So she sang me uh, the chorus, what became the chorus in the first verse of the song, and together within a few minutes we had written this song. So. Uh, and now my little seven-year-old granddaughter turned 15 a couple days ago. So how does that happen? Yeah. started to cry and then he said goodbye they met in an abandoned box store the joker and the thief on a seaman pad he said hey there really had there's a girl that says i look sad Chang to my ang, let's go for a ride, May Pang. Babe said, baby, in her ear, all things became unclear. In a voice between love and fear, a homeless And that's one of the, uh, that was uh, uh, off my first album. Uh, Goodbye and Ice. I like to say it was my first album. I could also say it was my only album. But let's think of it like my first album. And uh, well, there's a band that'll stand around here somewhere. I'll put that right there like that. And uh, I'll sign the tip over there. I'd say one of the most beautiful sounds in nature. Firewood for later. A What's that? Firewood for later. <laughs> so, 
where, where were we? Oh, I know. There's a guitar. I think I'll play it. And this is also from uh, the first album. You know, I keep saying that. Who knows, Mandy? Maybe we'll do another album someday. That would be my first album. <laughs> And if there's anything you want to hear at all, you know, feel free to call it into the station right now. Oh, I forgot. The, the fourth caller uh, wins a, a brand new Prius. So feel free to call. A um, couple things about that. Of course, we won't give you the phone number. Even if you find it, there's nobody to answer the phone. So time's up. Sorry, I can't give away the Prius next time. Maybe when Cindy hates here. What a great lineup for Arts on Fire. Our good friend Cindy Hate, Sarah is going to be playing with her. Uh, the Probables, of course, are incredible. I shouldn't have started, started that because I'm not sure I remember the other ones. Cold Lazarus. Feverhawk. And Feverhawk, thank you for you metal fans. I know Jason likes metal. You know, I like to, even though this is folk music, I like to be a little bit in tune.
Wonderful. Live music tonight on WRFA for this hour anyway. Arts on Fire Live featuring Ken Hardley and Mandy Andrews. Jason Sample here in the Regilene Media Arts Studio. Uh, we uh, have gone through this hour very quickly. I haven't seen an hour go by so quickly, but when great things are happening, typically time does fly. So uh, we're running somewhat short on time, about 10 minutes or so left to go in the program. Time for at least one more song, but I did promise some more uh, Q&A, and I think uh, uh, we already know about Ken, Mandy. Everybody knows Ken. He, like I said, he's been on WRFA airwaves for the past uh, decade, if not longer. Uh, but, but you're somewhat of a newcomer to our listeners anyway, so a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're playing the cello, obviously, for those listening on the air. That's the cello they hear. Uh, how long have you been playing the cello? Do you play any other instruments? And, you know, um, I guess what, what kind of a background in music do you have? How, how are you trained? Is it formally trained, or did you learn on your own? And don't forget to pull your microphone toward you. Yes, thank you. I'm actually a recovering violinist. I played violin for 25 years. Can't stand it anymore. I like it when other people play it, but I picked up the cello about thir um, eight years ago and haven't looked back. I absolutely love it. I play in several, several local orchestras, including the Warren Philharmonic Orchestra, and also, obviously, I have my duo, but I, I have uh, string duos as well. Um, with a violist and a violinist and uh, some drummers, and I do all kinds of different things, so. You flirted with jazz and that, you can't <laughs> say that number. Do you typically play jazz, or is that just some, a one-off that you did to, to make Ken happy and satisfy him? That was a happy accident. I was playing around one day, and it just happened, and it sounded cool, and I ran with it. That's not my typical, <laughs> but it's fun. Right on. Uh, for Ken, we mentioned your extensive involvement with Rolling Hills Radio. What was your favorite memory? You must have so many, but is there any particular memory stand out when it comes to Rolling Hills Radio and, and the 10 years uh, you were part of that program? Yeah, well, there are a couple things I can't forget. <clears throat> First of all, Ramblin' Jack Elliott, Bob Dylan's mentor, was on the show, which is, I was just really, really happy about. And uh, they call him Ramblin' Jack because he rambles, never, you know, he talks a lot. And I, you know, I told everybody, don't worry, nobody talks more than I do. Ramblin' Jack talks more than I do. So, Jason, you know when you do a show, you say, okay, the interviews are going to be X number of minutes long. And I told Ramblin' Jack, okay, we're going to be doing several interviews. Each one is two minutes long. And he said, well, that'd be fine, Ken. And then one interview, one, one question, one question went 14 minutes for the answer. And what do you, you know, what do you do? The guy's a legend. I'm not going to say, okay, that'll be sufficient now, Ramblin' Jack Elliott. So that was, <laughs> that was kind of fun. Uh, put our editor through a workout there. The other one was uh, when Bat McGrath played. Yeah. Bat, Bat McGrath and Miche Fanbro. What a show. Bat McGrath was the first national artist we ever had. And at the end of the show, we went to the meet and greet. And, uh, you know, Bat and I and Miche were standing at the end of the bar. Nobody was coming over. Usually people come over to visit and get autographs and things like that. And everybody was crowded around Bat's wife. And I found out later it's Trisha Case. Trisha Case, the, the star of The Young and the Restless, is uh, Bat's wife. And I said, Bat, what's the deal here? And he goes, happens wherever we go. Nobody pays attention to me at all. I remember that night well because I was one of those that was swarming around uh, Nina from The Young and the Restless for those who are fans of the YNR and I'm not a fan but my mother was so I was firmly aware of who that character was and very happy to uh, welcome her to Jamestown along with of course the late great Bat McGrath who uh, was a wonderful artist and very happy to have him here on your program so thanks for doing that. Um, we, we, could, we could ramble on for hours but like I said we're running short on time here. We've got your favorite program coming up next to unwind and then after that we have the platform two hours of hip-hop and an hour of r&b coming up uh, next here on wrfa we do it every saturday night ken knows but i'm sure a lot of our other listeners know as well uh, so we got to make way for them but we do have time for one more song before we do that where can people find out more about you uh ken hardly and, and mandy andrews and if they want to watch you perform or, or see you play somewhere live uh what's the best way to keep Posted on, on all your habitants. Yeah, well, you kind of can't get away from us. We've got a um, uh, Ken Hardly Mandy Andrews Facebook page. We've got a Ken Hardly Music Facebook page. We've each got a personal Facebook page and kenhardly.com for the official web page. And that's where all the future gigs are posted right there. So if you want to, that's where you go. Ken, Mandy, thank you so much for coming here tonight, doing a live performance here on WRFA. It's been a pleasure to have you in the, uh, the Media Arts Studio. 
What an honor. What an honor to be the first ones here. Thank you very much. Right Jason. on. I'll remind our listeners in two weeks, we will have another live performance. It's going to be Cindy Hate or Cindy Love, as she sometimes refers to herself. Hate, along love, with, you know. Yeah, the love and hate, right? And along with uh, Sarah Rafalowski, that'll be two nights from now at 8 o'clock right here on WRFA's Arts on Fire Live, again presented by the United Arts Appeal Project Pools Grant and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Uh, time for one more song, Ken. Take it away. Uh, the rest of the hour is yours, what little remains. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. Better start playing soon because Mandy told me I can't tell any jokes and I'm getting the urge right now. So let's get going, Mandy. real nice and let me stay with you for a while I was thinking I should go home tonight but I really like the things you said but not quite yet it's just you and me alone I've got this happy pounding
That was Mandy doing what she does so very beautifully. But thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, Arts on Fire has got some more shows coming up pretty soon, as Jason said. But we'd like to sincerely thank WRFA, not only for having us, but for the amazing things that they do for the community. I remember when they turned 10 years old just uh, recently, and I remember when I first tuned into it by mistake driving down the road, I said, what? is that. I really like it, and I never turn back. I listen to it all the time. And you should, too. And the beautiful complex here at the Reginald A. Center for the Arts, they have lots of things going on. So it's WRFA, low power to the people, right on. Thank you. <laughs>